Hello, Cruz. Hello, Clay. Hi, Jenna. You okay? We're going to read a new bedtime story, and this one is called Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there was a little girl who lived with her parents in a tiny cottage in a village in the forest. The girl's grandmother lived in another cottage in the same forest. The little girl's grandmother loved her very, very much. So one day, she decided to make the little girl a wonderful present. A red cloak with a red hood to match. The cloak was very warm and the little girl liked it so much that she wore it all the time. Everywhere she went in the village, people called her Little Red Riding Hood. Both the hood and the name suited her very well. And there she is. There's a little girl and she's wearing a red cloak and she's swinging on the tree, having a good time. That's probably like Gianna's going to, if she gets a red red dress, red coat. <laughs> and there she is with the mother. And the mother's giving her a basket to take through the woods. But one day, Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother fell ill. Her grandmother baked, her mother baked grandmother a lovely cake and she also made us some fresh butter. She called Little Red Riding Hood over. Maybe you should go and visit grandmother. As she is ill, she said. This cake and the fresh butter that I have made for her, I'm sure that a visit from you will cheer her up. But you have to promise me to be careful in the forest. It can be dangerous out there. Don't talk to any strangers. Little Red Riding Hood promised her mother she would indeed be careful. And there she is. She's taking a basket with her cake and the butter for her grandmother through the woods and she's been very, very careful. Taking a basket full of cake and butter, off Little Riding Hood went down the path to through the forest. She was so happy, skipping along, listening to the birds and looking at the flowers and she was looking forward to seeing her grandmother and making her feel better with the gifts she was carrying. It was such a lovely sunny day but some parts of the path were quite dark. So dark, in fact, that she didn't notice two big eyes watching her from behind the trees. Who could they belong to? <laughs> a little further along the path, Little Red Riding Hood bumped into a wolf. Well, good morning, Little Red Riding Hood. What have you got in that basket you are carrying? And where are you going? asked the wolf very kindly. I have a cake and some fresh butter for my grandmother who is ill. She lives in the middle of the forest, said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf licked his lips. Mm. How I would love to gobble up this little girl, he thought to himself. But that would be far too risky out here in the woods with all the woodcutters working. What if they saw me? But maybe if I'm clever I can heat her grandmother as well. Mm -hmm. So there's the wolf, and he's having some nice dreams about how he's going to be the Red Riding Hood and the grandmother. He don't want the basket, he just wants her. I don't think the wolf likes cake. <laughs> well, little Red Riding Hood, the wolf said. Why, if we both go and visit your grandmother? Little Red Riding Hood was a sweet and trusting girl, and she saw no harm in the idea. She even thought it would be good fun for grandmother to have two visitors. Okay, that's a good idea, said the little girl. The wolf smiled secretly, for his plan seemed to be working. I'll race you over there, he said. What do you think? But before Little Red Riding Hood could answer, the big bad wolf had already left for her grandmother's cottage. Seeing some pretty flowers, the little girl stopped to pick a few and take as a present for grandmother. The wolf was so much faster than Little Red Riding Hood, so he reached grandmother's cottage in next to no time. 
He knocked on the door and waited for a reply. Who is it? cried poor grandmother from her bed. It's only me, little Red Riding Hood, replied the wolf in his softest voice. I have brought you some cake and some freshly made butter. He hoped that grandmother would realise that it wasn't her granddaughter. The door isn't locked, my dear, so come right in, the old lady called. The big bow wolf bounded in, ran straight over to grandmother's bed and gobbled her right up. Now the wolf had to hurry so that he would be ready when Little Red Riding Hood arrived. The wolf quickly found the old lady's spare night dress and nightcap in a drawer. He put them on as fast as he could and then closed the curtains to darken the room. He hoped Little Red Riding Hood wouldn't notice that he wasn't her grandmother. Then he jumped into grandmother's bed and lay in wait for the little girl. A few minutes later, Little Red Riding Hood reached her grandmother's cottage. She tapped very gently on the door. She hoped her grandmother wasn't sleeping too soundly. You see, there he is, the wolf, dressed up as grandmother. I think he looks quite like grandmother, really. What do you think? Do you think she looks like grandmother as well? <laughs> I think it's a bit of a <laughs> real laugh. Who is it? whispered the wolf. It's Little Red Riding Hood. I brought you some homemade cake and fresh butter to make you feel better, the little girl said. The wolf grinned. He was already thinking about how tasty the little girl would be. Never mind the cake. It seemed that his plan was working out just the way he wanted it to. Come right in, dear. The door isn't locked, he croaked, trying to make his voice sound just like grandmother's. You sound very strange, Grandmother, called Little Red Riding Hood. She wondered what had happened to Grandmother's voice. Maybe because she was ill, she thought. Little Red Riding Hood stepped inside the cottage. Come over here so that I can see you, said the big bad wolf. Little Red Riding Hood was surprised when she saw her Grandmother lying there in her bed. Why, Grandmother, what big ears you have, Little Red Riding Hood explained. Well, all the better to hear you with, the wolf replied. Little Red Riding Hood took another good look at her grandmother. Why, Grandmother, what big teeth you have. Well, all the better to eat you with, snarled the wolf. And with that, he leapt out of bed and gobbled her up. Oh, oh, oh. There he is. He's already ate grandmother. And now he's at Little Red Riding Hood as well. Ooh. And he's sleeping very happily because he's had two nice bodies for dinner. <laughs> Luckily, Little Red Riding Hood's father was chopping wood nearby. And he was alerted to the screams by the animals in the forest. He quickly realised it was Little Red Riding Hood. He ran towards Grandmother's cottage and jumped through an opening window. He saw the wolf licking his lips and guessed what had happened. The brave man forced the wolf to spit out Grandmother and Little Red Riding Hood. Then he raised his axe and killed the wolf with one strike. Well, he gobbled them up and spat them out. <laughs> he didn't get to digest them. <laughs> and there he is. See, he's done the job, there's the dad, the father. Super dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood was so happy that she, her father and her beloved grandmother were all safe. The big bad wolf was dead and could no longer hurt them or anyone else. Thank goodness her father had been working nearby. Little Red Riding Hood gave her grandmother a big hug now she could get back to recovering with her from her cold. They all feasted on tea, cake and fresh butter and lived happily ever after. So that's the end of Little Red Riding Hood. So good night Cruz, good night Clay and good night Gianna. <laughs>